we're going to look at how the thyroid works. So just basically kind of think of this as thyroid biochemistry 101 oversimplified uh, to a large degree. So what happens is in your brain, there's a, there's a gland in your brain called the pituitary gland, and its job is to produce the hormone TSH. Now, those of you who have ever gone to your doctor, oftentimes what doctors measure is they measure TSH. What is that? Thyroid stimulating hormone. That's what that stands for. And usually they'll tell you your range for TSH needs to be less than 4.5 um, is generally speaking. So if it's higher than 4.5, they're going to call that hypothyroidism. If it's lower than um, 0.5, so this, if I'm sorry, I made a mis, misspeak there. If, if it's higher than 4.5, they're going to call that hypothyroidism. If it's lower than 0.5, they're typically going to call that hyperthyroidism. So this is, the reason I even point this out, it's not that you need to memorize lab reference ranges or anything, but most doctors today in today's day and age, uh, in medicine only measure TSH. They don't bother with any of the other thyroid markers. They typically, it's very common, you go and they're regulating your medicine or they're, they're making the decision is they only typically measure TSH. Now, why is that important to understand? Because TSH is made by the pituitary gland and it's only one hormone and it's not thyroid hormone. It's just the hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland. So if you come back to the diagram, TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T4. Now, T4 is thyroid hormone. That's what T4 is. So we say T4 equals thyroid hormone. This is also important to understand that it's inactive. It doesn't work. It doesn't have activity, meaning it doesn't speed up your metabolism. T4 is like the car without the car keys in it. You need the car keys to start the engine. T4 has to be turned into T3. T3 is active thyroid hormone. Okay, so that's what we're referring to down here. So you've got TSH from the brain, which again is not thyroid hormone, it's thyroid stimulating hormone. Now this, this process you need, what do you need for this nutritionally? I, I just gave you a bunch of research that showed you there were certain nutrients that were important in thyroid hormone function. Well, magnesium was one of them. So was zinc. So was vitamin B12. So these three are required for that action by your pituitary to be able to produce TSH. And so if you don't have adequate quantities of these three nutrients, you're gonna end up having abnormalities in TSH. Something else that should be spoken, um, let's see if we got room somewhere else to write it, is your TSH can be artificially elevated. We said that if it was above 4.5, it's hypo. If it's below 0.5, it's hyper. But there's two nutrients that can impact this, and one is iodine. So if you're taking large amounts of iodine, or if you're taking large amounts of biotin, which is a B vitamin, okay, these two B vitamins can increase your TSH artificially. So it's important to know that because some of you, you may be supplementing, you go to your doctor, and you get your TSH run, and then your doctor's screaming, oh my God, I can't believe how high your TSH is. It's 18 or it's 20. Um, we need to get you on medicine right away. But they didn't know about this, and if you were supplementing with these things. So if you're going to get blood work done, it's very important that you discontinue iodine and you discontinue biotin for at least a solid week before going in to have your TSH evaluated, because if you don't, you might get some artificially inflated high levels of TSH, which is gonna confuse you and it's gonna confuse your doctor. So again, wanted to point that out. So coming back to this, we've got TSH. Once you are capable of producing it, it will stimulate the thyroid gland to produce T4. All right, so now that we have T4, we know that T4 is thyroid hormone and it's inactive, it doesn't work. Okay, so it ha we have to convert T4 into T3. This is what's called conversion. Okay, so converting T4 to T3. Now, most thyroid hormone conversion occurs in the liver. Okay, that's why the liver's right here. So liver health becomes very important 
for T4 to T3 conversion. So maybe you're struggling, you know, you're an alcohol, you drink wine every night, right? And you didn't realize that that was that big a deal because your cardiologist told you that a glass of wine every night was healthy for you. But really what's happening is that wine is, 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 is inhibiting or reducing the ability for your liver to properly convert T4 to T3. Um, maybe you're, you're exposed to some other types of environmental toxins that are you know, bombarding your liver. Maybe you're on multiple medications that have to be metabolized through the liver. Perfect example, statin medicines. If you're having a medicine to lower your cholesterol called a statin, those, those drugs hinder the liver's ability. So does your average everyday Tylenol. Over-the-counter acetaminophen can actually start damaging the liver if you take it regularly enough. So your health of your liver is very important for this T4 to T3 conversion because this T3 is what activates the DNA. So the T3 talks to the DNA inside your cell. Okay, it activates it, and that's what leads to an increase in your metabolic function or, or a regulation of your metabolic function. So let's back up just a minute. We said that these three nutrients, magnesium, zinc, and B12, are necessary for your brain to produce TSH. Okay, but we also know that to produce T4, you can see here I've highlighted some of the big points. One of it is T4 requires iodine. Now, iodine represents... The four, that's four molecules of iodine. That's what T4 is. It's four molecules of iodine. And then this also requires protein, okay, because the T equals protein. Particularly the T and T4 is tyrosine, which is an amino acid that you get by eating protein. Okay, so getting adequate protein. I get a lot of people come to see me, they're under eating. They're not eating enough calories and they're not getting adequate tyrosine from their diet. So their body struggles to produce thyroid hormone because there's not enough tyrosine as a backbone to produce T4. Get a lot of people too that don't get adequate iodine in their diet. And where do we get iodine? Predominantly we get iodine from seafood. So if it comes out of salt water, then generally it contains iodine. If it doesn't, then, then there, the iodine is not super, let's just say in our soil, our soil is not super rich in iodine in most places in the world. So getting adequate iodine really requires healthy quantities of kelp, healthy quantities of seafood uh, in the form of fish, etc. cetera. Um, so, so and seaweed is another source of iodine, good source of dietary iodine. But T4, to put T4 together, there's a few nutrients not listed here to make T4. It also requires vitamin C. It also requires vitamin B, particularly B2 and B3. Um, they help with the transport of iodine into the thyroid, uh, into the area of the thyroid gland where this T4 is produced, and vitamin C helps with that as well. So you need vitamin C, vitamin B2 to put T4 together. And then what we also have from T4 to T3 requires selenium, that conversion. There's an enzyme, it's called a deiodinase enzyme. It takes away one of the iodines so that you are left with one less iodine, that's T3. That requires selenium, but it also requires iron for that conversion. That's why we were talking about iron earlier when I was showing you those research studies. So again, these are key nutrients that play a role along this path. And then for T3 to talk to your DNA requires vitamins A and vitamin D. This ha you have to have vitamin A and vitamin D for T3 to be able to communicate to your DNA. And then the last step in this, this last step, which is that increase in metabolism, that requires omega-3 fatty acids. So these nutrients are all what I would call non-negotiable for your thyroid biochemistry. So how many times, it, raise your hand, okay, if you've ever been to the doctor and you were having your thyroid evaluated and they measured your TSH, but then they also measured all these other nutrients. Raise your hand uh, if that's ever happened to you. I bet you less than 1% of you probably raise your hand because this is not typical. Doctors generally don't, either they don't care or they don't understand or they don't know to measure and evaluate these different things. I think most doctors even endocrinologists don't, because no nutrition is taught in medical school, nutritional biochemistry is not taught, I think they're just not aware of the nutrients involved in the chemical pathways of, of creating and, and maintaining healthy thyroid hormone, not just production, because you can see it's about more than production. So 
here is about production, B2, B3, uh, protein, tyrosine, and iodine. But pre-production, right, magnesium, zinc, and B12, post-production, we've got selenium and iron and vitamins A and D and omega-3. So again, it's not just about how to pr properly make thyroid hormone, it's about how to make it and how to produce it and how to metabolize and how it goes on its journey through the body, right? And how different things affect it. So all these things are important when considering how to properly analyze why a thyroid, uh, why a person might have a thyroid diagnosis. Again, whether it's Graves or whether it's Hashimoto's or whether it's just purely non-autoimmune and it's a nutritional hypothyroidism. So this is important to measure. Most doctors will never measure all that. It's, it's quite complex and complicated. And most doctors don't have time. They give you, you know, what, what is a typical doctor visit nowadays? Five minutes to see the doctor, 45 minutes to wait in line. You know, you might get 10 minutes with a nurse or a nurse practitioner or a PA, but it's pretty rare that you actually get time with a doctor. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.